Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch MF from Graham Ahead. Today we begin with a horrifying report of worshipers attacked as they gathered for Pentecost Sunday. Gunmen open fire in a church in Nigeria. It's quite unbelievable that somebody will come and the intention was to kill everybody in that church. The governor of the state calling it a vile and satanic attack. Why the lights could go out here in America because there's a back door to our country's power grid and China holds the key. What they have is the ability today, they have their finger on that trigger today that they can take over that transformer and everything that transformer supplies coming in or going in. This is a very big deal. How could one piece of hardware take down our grid? will expose the catastrophic vulnerability that's been largely ignored. And protest in Iran, not against America, but against the government of Iran. The slogans say it all. Uh, the slogans want to do away with the regime, with the Islamic Republic. They say our enemy is not the United States. Our enemy is here in Iran. Could the Islamic regime in Iran actually be overthrown? A California woman gets some furniture for her new home, only to make a shocking discovery, a great deal of cash hidden in a sofa. But what did she do with it? We'll have that story and more today on CBN Newswatch. This is CBN Newswatch. We begin with a Catholic church in Nigeria where gunmen opened fire on worshipers and detonated explosives. Investigators did not immediately release an official death toll, but a member of the legislature who represents the area said at least 50 are believed dead, though others put the number higher. Many children were among the dead. It's quite unbelievable that somebody will come and the intention was to kill everybody in that church. And those running out, they were being shot from outside. Those who were inside were being shot from inside. And they threw two dynamites to blow off the altar down to the sanctuary. This kind of desecration is, can only be done by the evil one. Nigeria's security forces did not immediately respond to questions about how the attack occurred or if there are any leads about suspects. The governor of the state where the attack happened tweeted the assailants will be hunted down and they will pay for their crimes, and he called it a vile and satanic attack. CBN News previously reported that attacks against Christians throughout Nigeria have escalated over the past few years. You can find out more about this deadly assault at CBNNews.com. Late last year, the State Department dropped Nigeria from its list of countries over concern over religious freedom, a decision that dismayed members of the bipartisan U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom. The Biden administration taking that action after the Trump administration had designated Nigeria a country of particular concern a year earlier. Late last week, the State Department released its new findings on religious freedom, and China, Russia, Afghanistan were just some of the nations highlighted as being among the worst defenders of religious freedom around the globe. Here's CBN News White House correspondent Abigail Robertson. This report is about spreading that kind of progress to more parts of the world. Secretary of State Blinken sees the impact of the historic papal visit as profound. He sent a message not only to Iraqis, but to the whole world, that Islam and other religions can sit together peacefully. Still, the report reveals much work to be done, calling out many repeat offenders like China for religious freedom violations. China continues its genocide and repression of predominantly Muslim Uyghurs and other religious minority groups. Since April 2017, more than one million Uyghurs, ethnic Kazakhs, Kyrgyz, and others have been detained in internment camps in Xinjiang. International Religious Freedom Ambassador Rashad Hussein claims Russia has doubled down on violations since invading Ukraine in March. President Putin sought to justify the unprovoked and unjustified invasion of Ukraine through the blatantly false pretext of denazification. The report also highlighted how religious freedom has deteriorated since the Taliban regained control of Afghanistan in 2021. The Taliban regime and rival militant group ISIS-K have detained, intimidated, threatened, and attacked members of religious minority communities. 
Hussein says thanks to technology and social media, the U.S. has more allies helping combat religious freedom violators than ever before. We have mechanisms to shed light on abuses taking place, and we have the means to hold bad actors accountable. That was CBN's Abigail Robertson. Turning now to the Middle East, the Palestinian Authority paid more than $150 million to the families of terrorists in 2020. 20. That policy called pay to slay is still in force, and Palestinians are using your tax dollars to pay for their terror campaigns. In 2018, Congress passed a law cutting off specific economic aid to the Palestinians to stop the practice. Now, more legislation is needed to finish the task. CBN Capitol Hill correspondent Matt Galka has the story. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill are hoping to move quickly and expand the Taylor Force Act and finally put an end to the payments and rewards that are being given out to the families of terrorists. Not a day goes by when Stuart Force does not think about his son Taylor, taken from the world six years ago. Probably more like an hour goes by that we that we don't miss Taylor, uh, that we... You know, there's, there's, there will always be an emptiness. Taylor Force was a U.S. Army veteran murdered by a Palestinian terrorist in Israel in 2016. His family made it their mission to end the Palestinian Authority's so-called pay-for-slay policy, where the PA pays stipends to the families of the terrorists who commit the crimes. It's sad to say, but the same countries that are hell-bent on destroying the United States on destroying Israel, have no problem using U.S. dollars to fund their terror campaigns. In 2018, the Taylor Force Act was signed into law attempting to curb the payments, but hundreds of millions of dollars are still being paid out. Force's family hopes a new bill, the Taylor Force Martyr Prevention Act, will help complete their mission of ending the payments. The bill targets banks in the Middle East, and Congressman Doug Lamborn is sponsoring it in the House. Well, the Palestinian Authority has made it really clear that their intention is to keep these payments going. And so what uh, we're trying to do is go at the financial institutions that prop up the Palestinian Authority and try to take away their ability to make this happen. We're, we'd take away their ability to have correspondent accounts in the United States. Our approach from the original Taylor Force Act was to keep the United States taxpayer from sending money to the Palestinians. Uh, and they use that to, to fund their terrorist program. So it bothers me and we will do anything we can to, to stop them from doing it. The bill has already been introduced in the Senate, and it does have a Democratic co-sponsor in the House. Congressman Lamborn says he wants to get the bill passed before potential new members of Congress are seated in January. Matt Gelka, CBN News. Coming up, it's the crippling attack we never saw coming because there's a backdoor to our electric grid. And guess who's got the key? China. We'll bring you the story when we come back. Welcome back. There's a backdoor to our country's electric grid, and China holds the key. While most of the focus has been on network security, experts warn that a major attack on our critical infrastructure could be imminent. Caitlin Burke reports on the threat that's been largely ignored. Substations like this one are in almost every city nationwide. Most house transformers, which are a huge part of getting power out to you. The larger they are, the more critical. Transformers have been called by many people the Achilles heel of the electric grid. Transformers take voltage sent by power plants and convert it to a level that can be distributed. Essentially, they keep electricity flowing at safe levels. While the U.S. electric grid consists of thousands of them, the high voltage carriers make up less than 3%. Even so, they're responsible for transporting 60 to 70% of our electricity. These are 500 ton, 20 feet tall, multi-million dollar machines. They're also custom made in China. And experts like Joe Weiss say while the U.S. is busy securing its networks, China has the ability and opportunity to sabotage the equipment we rely on them to manufacture, essentially creating a backdoor into our electric grid. 
what they have is the ability today, they have their finger on that trigger today that they can take over that transformer and everything that transformer supplies coming in or going out. This is a very big deal. Weiss, an engineer and independent consultant, says this is no hypothetical warning. The U.S. has already discovered backdoor electronics in a Chinese-made transformer. It was that discovery that led then-President Trump to sign an executive order in May of 2020 banning the acquisition, importation, transfer, or installation of any bulk power systems from foreign adversaries. The discovery also led to something that's never happened before. The next large transformer from China that arrived at the port of Houston was intercepted by the U.S. Department of Energy and taken to the Sandia National Laboratory. Remember, this is a 500-ton, multi-million dollar machine. So there was a utility missing. Llewellyn King is a journalist who's been covering the energy field for decades. When he approached the Department of Energy about the missing transformer, he was met with a veil of silence. No comment is, uh, to me, very much a comment. It says there's uh, smoke and there must be fire. So not, not only do our domestic utilities not know what's being found, our closest allies, who also have Chinese-made transformers, do not know what has been found. There are more than 200 of these large Chinese transformers in our electric grid today. One accounts for 10% of the power going to New York City. Another supplies 18 to 20% of the power going to Las Vegas. And yet, the U.S. is focused on our cyber networks, something China has already proven it can bypass. Instead of trying to hack all of these networks and everything else to try to get in, all they did was put in some hardware that will allow them to send signals. So instead of sending a voltage signal that's coming from a voltage sensor in that transformer, they can send a signal from Beijing into that piece of equipment. In November of 2020, an Arctic blast froze 40 percent of the Texas electric grid. Millions of homes and businesses were left without power. The outages lasted only days, and yet more than 100 people died. Back in 2012, then-Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta warned a room full of business leaders about the scope of a true attack on the U.S. grid. The collective result of these kinds of attacks could be a cyber Pearl Harbor, an attack that would cause physical destruction and the loss of life, an attack that would paralyze and shock the nation and create a new profound sense of vulnerability. Weiss says the question is not if this kind of attack will happen, but rather, will we even know it was a cyber attack? What a sophisticated attacker will do and Russia and China, even Iran and North Korea now fit in this. They will make a cyber attack look like an equipment malfunction. He points to Stuxnet, the U.S. cyber attack that took out a fifth of Iran's nuclear centrifuges. For a year, an entire year, the centrifuges were being destroyed. The people inside could hear those centrifuges screaming. They never even thought that cyber was the problem. They simply viewed it as a systemic design flaw. Experts like Weiss stress that our critical infrastructure is made up of engineering equipment, and it will take a partnership between engineers and cybersecurity defenders to truly protect it. Our workforce is not trained to address this. The people that understand the equipment have no training in cybersecurity. The people who understand cybersecurity are not trained to understand how an electric grid or, you know, a pipeline or anything else works. This backdoor threat from our adversaries applies to all of our critical infrastructure, not just the grid. Much of that same equipment is used in all other industries. So it's a weak spot for the electric industry is just as much a weak spot for every other industry. The parts that make up this critical infrastructure are also old, and as we've seen in Texas, susceptible to extreme weather events. So whether it's malicious or unintentional, if these systems go down, it will be months, if not years, before we get them back. 
making us truly vulnerable. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. Still ahead, the people of Iran taking to the streets in recent weeks to protest their own government. Could the Islamic regime actually be overthrown? We're going to take a look at that question right after this. For more than three weeks, hundreds of thousands of Iranians took to the streets to protest against the Iranian regime. In what began as a protest over government action that led to an overnight sharp increase in the price of food, but the uprising soon turned into anger against the government. In more than 40 cities throughout Iran, people call for regime change with cries like, death to the dictator, and our enemy is not America. And as CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell tells us, Iranians have other grievances against their government as well. Thousands also blame the government after a building collapse in Tehran that killed dozens. It's become a symbol of the failure of the regime. And as it has in the past, the government has sent out its security forces to brutally suppress the protest. We want, as you know, what's happening in Iran by the Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, for these cities are people uprising. And then we want to just uh, get their voices to the international communities because of the brutality and dictatorship inside the Islamic Republic of Iran. Dr. Amir Hamidi came to Israel as part of the Shoshana mission to Israel a goodwill delegation from Iranian organizations outside of Iran. They met with Israeli officials, Iranian expats, and came to tell the world what's happening to the Iranian people. Lots of people uprising because of the mismanagement of the economy, and people are unemployed, people are not working. Food is so expensive, they cannot offer to even eat, and they cannot manage the country. And brutality is unbelievable. Human rights are violated. Lots of political prisoners, people get executed for no reason. The slogans say it all. Uh, the slogans want to do away with the regime, with the Islamic Republic. They say our enemy is not the United States. Our enemy is here in Iran. What they say is we don't want neither Gaza nor Lebanon. Our life is for Iran. So. It is about themselves and their hopes and aspirations. These protests in 2022 follow demonstrations all the way back to the Green Revolution in 2009, calling for regime change. The question is, could these protests succeed when others have not? Is it realistic that the regime could be overthrown? Absolutely, no doubt about that, because you cannot force the people to live in past 43 years and they cannot have any freedom of speech, freedom of work, freedom of closing. It doesn't exist. And they, especially they arresting the uh, dual citizens who travels to visit their families. And basically it is a mafia type organization. Many say the Biden administration's response to the protests has been weak by continuing to negotiate with Iran about its nuclear program. This delegation came with a warning about the nuclear talks. You cannot negotiate with the terrorists. This is the policy we do have, and stay away from negotiation because negotiation is not going to solve any problem because mm -hmm. last agreement, they didn't obey the agreement. They continued building their ballistic missiles. I don't think it will be beneficial to the people of Iran, people of the region, and the people of the globe. These Iranians applaud the Abraham Accords and hope to see what they call the Cyrus Accords. Those accords would be named after the ancient Persian King Cyrus, who blessed the Jewish people and allowed them to rebuild Jerusalem. The Cyrus Accords embody the aspirations and the hopes of what Iranians want. And it is historical because of Cyrus, human rights. It is something that basically at this time that you've got the Abraham Accords. The face of the Middle East is changing and Iran has to be part of the new uh, Middle East and its new future. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Coming up, a California woman makes a shocking discovery when she got a sofa and a bedroom set off Craigslist online finding a great deal of cash hidden inside the furniture. And it's not only what she found, but what she did with it that's making news. We're going to have her story when we come back. Stay with us. 
A California woman got an extreme shock when she got some furniture recently. Vicki Yamoto recently moved into a new home and didn't have any furniture, so she turned to the Internet to find some. She located a family who wanted to give away a sofa and bedroom set. Then she said she noticed something odd hidden in one of the couch cushions, and she unzipped it to find envelopes, and she began screaming, calling for her son. The envelopes were filled with thousands of dollars in cash, the total $36,000, and she quickly decided to give the money back. God has been kind to me and my children, so they are all alive and well. I'm, I have three beautiful grandchildren, so what can I ever ask from God? The family was shocked to hear the news because the couch and furniture belonged to a loved one who had died. They discovered other money hidden around the individual's home, but nothing like the amount Yumodu found. And while Yumodu said she wasn't expecting anything in return, the family offered to buy her a new refrigerator and gave her $2,200. Time now for your Monday motivation. I want to leave you with this thought to jumpstart your work week. It is a good day to look in the mirror and see beyond your reflection. Don't see your circumstances, don't see what others see, and don't see your past. See what God sees, and in His eyes, you are a masterpiece. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. With that word, I want to encourage you to make today a marvelous Monday. And be sure to have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. Do it with purpose and on purpose. That is a wrap for this edition of CBN News Watch. I want to remind you, you can always find more of our programs on the CBN News Channel as well as online at cbnnews.com. You can find them both places at any time. We'd love to know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can email us. The address is right there at the bottom of your screen, newswatch at cbn.com. You can also reach out and touch us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. Make this a marvelous Monday and join us right back here, same time tomorrow. Goodbye and God bless.